Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at the transpose of a matrix. So let's here look at the definition and then we'll consider some examples. So take A to be some M by N matrix, then the transpose of A. And this is how we denote it. We write A and use an uppercase T in exponent. Be careful that this is not an exponent. This simply means the transpose of A. That's why we use an uppercase T and not a lowercase T. So the transpose of A will actually be now an N by M matrix. And if you ask, well, how do I find the entries of a transpose? So if you ask, what is the entry of a transpose in the ith row jth column? It is the entry of A in the jth row ith column. And so you flip the row and the column index of A to get the entry of A transpose. This may not look like much. It may not be clear what the transpose will look like. Let's consider a simple example and then you will see hopefully that the transpose is a very simple operation. Let's take A to be a 2 by 3 matrix. Suppose it's 1, 8, negative 4, 5, 6, 10. So A is a 2 by 3 matrix. Two rows, three columns. Well, let's see now about a transpose. We know that a transpose will be a 3 by 2 matrix. Let's find the entries of a transpose one at a time and then realize that we can construct a transpose much more rapidly. So a transpose equals, it will be a three rows, two columns, so it will be a three by two matrix. And let's construct one entry at a time, just this one time. So let's see. Let's construct the first column of a transpose. So we'll have a transpose, this is the entry one, one, row one, column one. Well, the entry of A transpose in the ith row jth column is the entry of A. And now the jth row ith columns, so we just flip the indices, but if you flip one and one, you get one. So the entry here in A transpose is the entry in A row one, column one, which is this one. Let's find the second entry in the first column. So this is now the entry of A transpose looking now at the second row, first column. Well, this is simply the entry of A, now in the first row, second column. So if we look here, one, two, that is eight. And finally, the entry of A transposed in the third row, first column, is the entry of A flipping the indices in the first row, third column. Well, let's look. In A in the first row, third column, row one, column three, negative four. And if you look now, something is interesting. We could have constructed the first column of A transpose much more rapidly, as it is simply the first row of A. And so you see the first row of A becomes the first column of A transpose. And you can probably guess now that the second row of A will become the second column of A transpose. For that one time, let's just check, but this always happens. When you find the transpose of a matrix, the rows become columns, or vice versa, the columns become rows. And you'll see this very easily once we have the final result of A transpose. Well, the entry here would be the entry in row one, column two. A transpose one, two is the entry of A, two, one. Second row, first column, second row, first column, five. The entry here is in row two, column two. So A, T, two, two. Well, if you flip two and two, you get two and two again, which is entry six. 
And finally, the entry in A transpose in row 3, column 2, is the entry of A in row 2, column 3. 2, 3. 2, 3 is 10. And as guessed, the second row of A becomes the second column of A transposed. And so you can, in the future, construct the transpose of a matrix much more efficiently. The rows simply become the columns. First row of A, first column of A transpose. Second row of A, second column of A transpose. And you can go backwards. You could say, well, okay, the first column of A is the first row of A transposed. The second column of A is the second row of A transpose. And finally, the third column of A is the third row of A transposed. So you can think of it any way you want. The rows of A become the columns of A transposed, or the columns of A become the rows of a transpose, and that's it. That is the transpose of a matrix. Very simple construction of a new matrix. Well, as the trace, although it is a slightly different operation, the transpose has some very fundamental properties. I will state these properties here and let you prove them as exercises. So properties of course, of the transpose. So if you take A and B to be matrices of the same size, and you ask what is the transpose of A plus B or A minus B, the answer is you can transpose each matrix individually and then add or subtract them. If this were a plus, the transpose of A plus B is the transpose of A plus the transpose of B. If this were a minus, the transpose of A minus B will be the transpose of A minus the transpose of B. So first property of the transpose. What if you do a scalar multiple of a matrix and then transpose this? If you think of it, a real number is a one by one matrix. If you transpose this, nothing happens. And all you get is K times the transpose of A. This is true for all real numbers k. Finally, the third property, as in the trace, is the most interesting one as it is not so subtle. What if a and b are such that you can multiply them together in the order a, b? So you can compute a times b. And what if you ask, and say, well, if I add the transpose of A and the transpose of B, how does that relate to the transpose of the product of A and B? And here's where it's subtle. You transpose both matrices, but you have to invert the order of the product. So it will not be A transposed, B transposed. It will be B transposed, then A transposed. This is not so obvious, and again, I leave the proof to you as an exercise. Of course, you could extend these properties over a sum of several matrices or a product of several matrices. As just a side remark. Oh, and one thing that I could also add. What if you transpose the transpose of a matrix? So you flip the rows and columns, and you flip them back. It should be pretty clear that you get the original matrix back. So these are your first four properties. And again, you can extend this one and this one. This one is clear. This one. So if you had a product of three matrices, A times B times C, where each product is defined, once again you would transpose each matrix but completely reverse the order of the product. So this would be C transposed, B transposed, A transposed. So in general, you can see where this is going pretty clearly. If you were to multiply A1 with A2 up to say AM, if you had M matrices and transpose them, 
Well, you would get a m transpose, then a m minus 1 transpose, dot, 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 up to a 2 transpose, a 1 transpose. So keep this in mind. If you transpose a product, you transpose each matrix, but you completely reverse the order of the product. So once again, these four properties I leave to you as exercises. I'll give you two definitions, simple definitions that relate to the transpose of a matrix. The notion of symmetric matrices and skew symmetric matrices. And those hold for square matrices. So let A be an arbitrary square n by n matrix. Here's the definition. Definition 1. We say that A is symmetric if, quite simply, its transpose equals itself. So you transpose the matrix and nothing happens. You get back the original matrix. Definition 2, that of a skew symmetric matrix. So we say that A is Q, S K E W, symmetric, if you transpose the matrix and you don't get the original matrix back, but the negative of the original matrix. So A is symmetric if its transpose equals itself. A is skew symmetric if its transpose equals its negative. Let me give you an example of each. I'll give you an example of a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix, say. So A will go with 2, 5, 5, negative 9. So if you transpose A, the first row becomes the first column, 2, 5. The second row becomes the second column, 5, negative 9. And if you see 2, 5, 5, negative 9, 2, 5, 5, negative 9, which equals A. So this matrix is symmetric. And you can see geometrically that when you transpose a matrix, since you flip the row and the column index, the diagonal entries never move. This is the indices 1, 1, 2, 2. So when you flip the indices on the main diagonal, they stay the same. And so when you transpose a matrix, the diagonal entries do not move. What moves are the entries above and below the main diagonal. So geometrically, the condition to have a symmetric matrix, you can have any diagonal entries, but as long as the entries above are the same as the entries below the main diagonal, your matrix will be symmetric. Because what is above the main diagonal will land below, and what is below will land above after you transpose. You see this 5 ended up being this 5, and this 5 ended up being this 5. Let's look now at a skew symmetric matrix. Now a 3 by 3. If you think of the property here, when you transpose a matrix, the diagonal entries do not move, and so they must be equal to their negatives. But a real number can only be its negative if it is equal to 0. So a skew symmetric matrix must have 0 diagonal entries. And as we've just said, what is above, after we transpose, what is above the main diagonal will end up being below. What is below has to end up being above. So they have to be negatives of one another. So if the entries here are, say, 5, negative 3, 8, well, the entry here will have to be negative 8. The entry here will have to be positive 3. And the entry here will have to be negative 4. And let's check that. That this will give us a skew symmetric matrix. As we have zeros on the diagonal, 
and what's above is the negative of what's below. After transposing, we should get the negative of the original matrix. First row becomes the first column, so 0, 4, negative 3. Second row becomes the second column, negative 4, 0, 8. And third row becomes the third column, 3, negative 8, 0. So let's see, is this a negative of 8? Well, if you negate A, you get 0, negative 4, 3, check. 4, 0, negative 8, check. Negative 3, 8, 0, check. And this is indeed the negative of 8. This matrix is skew symmetric. This one is symmetric. But always think of this with respect to the diagonal entries. You can have a matrix that is symmetric with any entries on the main diagonal, as long as what is above is the same as what's below, you will have a symmetric matrix. For a skew symmetric matrix, you must have zeros on the main diagonal. Whatever you choose to be above the main diagonal, once reflected, must be negated. And this will always give you a skew symmetric matrix. There are a lot of ways to construct systematically symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. Those are on the problem sheet, and of course are left as exercises.